Hello everyone, welcome back to Tea Time with Aloha and Coco. I'm Vicky, if you're new around here. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to be part of the Tea Time family. Guys, if you don't know what Tea Time with Aloha and Coco is, it's a channel dedicated to Disney, DIY, family, and lifestyle vlogs. I love to do fun things with my family and then share them so that I can inspire you to go out and do the same. Today's video is all about a question I get asked a lot. This question is so incredibly valid because as a Disney mom, um, we tend to go over to the parks a lot, a few times a month. And um, every time we go to a store as children, um, you can already imagine, you start to see all that Disney merch. You start to see all that amazing stuff and you're like, oh my God, I want this, I want that. I personally am like, oh my God, I need this, I need that. But as a child, that world is just so phenomenal that you don't know when to kind of stop. So I get asked a lot, what do you do when you go to Disney and your kids want all those toys and all those souvenirs? Well. It's actually a process, but I'm here to share with you guys today. Teaching children the value of money now is going to be much easier for them in the long run. So without further delay, here are my five tea time tips for how to help your children understand and value money. Here we go. So we're going to start with this machine. As I mentioned before, we have two of them. One is for Coco and one is for Aloha. The time, what they're displaying here now is the time. As soon as you get the machine, you go ahead and you put the date. So it'll say the date and then you click in the time or whatnot. Right now, these have to be redone because as you can say, uh, see up top, it says AM. It's not 12 AM. It's not um, the 4th of um, April. It's actually the 10th. So that has to be redone. But down here is the time so you'll always be able to see the time just as you would a regular atm machine over here we have a military time so we have to fix that as well but you get the gist of it so these are the machines they're 59.99 they come in many colors this is great for everyone these machines are going to come with a handy dandy personal atm card now this is just a little plastic card it has a strip in the back but it starts teaching children about the concept of a card of a debit card and this is something that as they get older you can start implementing so all they have to do is simply um create a passcode uh like a little yeah like a little passcode like a security code so once they enter the card it's going to ask for their security code. And as you can see here, it's blinking code. So over here, we just insert a security code. And as you can see, my daughter has $36. So in this machine, all you have to do, if you wanna deposit money, once your card is in and you put in your security code, you're gonna see that it has a couple of buttons over here on the right-hand side. You have $1, $5, $10, and $20. So the way it would work is you would press, let's say you have a $5 bill that you're going to put into your ATM. You're gonna click the $5 bill first, and you're going to go ahead and insert it. This helps the actual machine keep track of how much money you have. It's very important that you keep in mind a couple of things. This particular machine, when you're inserting the money, if you pull out the bill while it's trying to go in, it's going to calculate it because if it senses a bill going in, it will count it. So if you put in a $5 bill and then you pull it out, it's going to calculate the $5. So it's very, very important that you understand that. Next, it has withdraw and balance. One of my favorite tools in this machine is to withdraw. Let me show you how it works. All you have to do is put the card, put the code, press withdraw. This button's gonna light up, press it down and it opens. My daughter's $34 are in here. This is something that's very important for you guys to understand because these are, at the end of the day, for kids. It's got, it has an alarm. So if this is open for too long, it starts firing an off an alarm like if somebody's stealing, which is fantastic. Um, because you're inserting the bills here and it has like a little um, mechanism that like it allows for you to put money in <clears throat> and roll in, sometimes you have to go in and you have to press the money down because if not, it won't take the money. It'll be too much. While it's open, it's blinking because you have to type in how much you're going to take off. So I can take off $10 and it'll automatically deduct it. Now, if you don't type in how much money, it's not going to deduct it. Like now, I let's say I took all the money out, I close it, it still has the same amount. Uh, but that's something I wanted to show you guys because it is a fantastic way to um, to withdraw, to keep money in there. It's, it's really fun for them. It's so fun. Now we're going to jump into tip number two, and it's really simple, but it's extremely helpful. Tip number two, create 
a journal where they can log what is deposited and what is withdrawn. Super simple tip, but it is so incredibly important for them to physically see in numbers what they have versus what they're spending. Tip number three, do not under any circumstance. Now I know it's hard, but this is how I'm able to do it. Do not under any circumstance give children extra money so that they can add it up to buy something that they want. For example, I always tell the girls, everything you have inside of your ATM, half of it will go to savings. The other half is to spend. Now they have 30, let's say $30 in there. You're going to have 15 to spend and the other 15 must stay in there. And that's how they manage it on their journal, their log, because they can have an additional $30 and you know, they'll go ahead and take 30 and leave 30 for savings. And that's how they manage it. Now, I always tell them before you purchase anything, take a very good look. So we'll go to the Disney resorts and um, we'll go to the gift shops and I will always have them look before we enter the park. Look at everything you want. I have them go into the stores and look at absolutely everything at the gift shop before we walk into the park. And the reason for it is because they start to get an idea of the things that they like. And with time, you we all know that you may want something, but you give it an hour, give it two hours, three hours. Sometimes our mind changes. We find other, other things that we want. So what I usually do is if we're going to Disney, we're going to be in the parks for, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I will take the girls to, to give you an idea, uh, a big store at downtown Disney. Look at everything. They'll look at everything. They're not going to buy anything. Not Friday not Saturday. And on Sunday, I will ask them, okay, so you remember that bag you really wanted? Do you still want it? A lot of the times they'll tell me, no, 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 no. I saw something else I wanted. How do you manage that? Because a lot of the times kids are like, I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. I figured out a way that works for me. And I take photos of everything they want. So let's say we'll go to Target. I'll walk in. Mom, I want this. Okay. They already know, mom, I want this. Can you take a picture? I start taking pictures and I create a photo album on my phone called gifts the girls want at the end of the year or their birthday. So like Christmas and their birthday, um, they'll all start scrolling through those pictures and they'll be like, oh no, I I really don't want that anymore. And I'll remove it. No, I really don't want that anymore. Mom, take it off. And a hundred photos will turn into literally five, six photos. And that's what they get for Christmas. Now these are big purchases. A lot of the times they tell me, I'm going to save my money for Disney because there are things that you can get in Disney that you can't get here in Miami. So I always tell them, look for an item you really want. Let's set a goal. And that's what your goal is to purchase. So right now, Aloha has this goal set. She wants to save $100 because there's a book bag she found at Universal Studios in Islands of Adventure, which is the book bag at um, Jurassic Park. It's a lounge fly. She's recently become obsessed with lounge flies, backpacks. She loves them. Um, she, she just, she's fascinated with it. So now she knows, okay, that is a book bag I want. I'm going to save for it. Now I can very easily go and pick it up for her. I can purchase it for her and give it to her for her birthday. But she's so adamant about saving her money so that she can make that purchase herself that I don't want to get it for her. I want her to earn it. I want her to work towards it. And that's what she's doing. So little by little, she's saving every penny. Right now she's at $34, I think. And little by little, she's going to save. She's going to save until she gets to that point. And when she's able to purchase it, the look of satisfaction. Coco, on the other hand, she also has $34, but she is um, not obsessed with anything. This past trip that we went to Disney, um, they just got like a little squishy toy, but that was it. They didn't ask for, you know, all these toys, you know, kids run into the toys. So I want this. I want nothing. She didn't ask for anything. Um, So she told me I'm I'm, I'm not interested in anything right now. Uh, I'm going to save my money because if I do find something I really, really want, I want to be able to buy it. So she's just saving her money. There's no pressure for her to, you know, save a specific amount because she wants something. No, she's just very simply, I'm going to save my money, mom. Tip number four. Do I give them money so that they can go to Disney? No, I don't do that. And this is what I do. I usually take their half. So for example, they have now $34. So I will take um, half of the 34 um, $17. I'll take the $17 and I will put it in a gift card 
So we'll go to Target together. I'll get either a Disney gift card or um, I'll do like a Visa or something. I usually will put the, the, the activation fee. I'm not going to, you know, I'm learning too here. Like I'm not going to go and push for them to pay for activation fees. I'll pay for the activation fees, but I'll get the gift card and I will put the $17 in it. Um, maybe, you know, if, if there's a minimum amount of like 20, then I'll just put the rest. Um, and what I'll do is I'll give them that gift card and they have to manage it. Um, they have to manage it. They have to log, you know, this is what I'm using. This is what I have left over. And with that card, they go on trips. Now, the best part about these cards is that they're reloadable. So let's say that they go to Disney. They didn't spend their money. They didn't want to spend their money. I didn't find anything interesting. They come back home. They'll have $17 or $20 in their card. And I'll put that back in the ATM in like the little compartment. Now, once I do that, the next time we go to Disney, if they have another $30 or whatever the case, then I take half of that and I reload the card with that amount. So that's what we do so that they always know, okay, this is how much I have in my card. This is what I'm able to spend. And that has worked wonders for the girls because a lot of the times they're not really interested in things because they understand I'm going to lose money for something that I may not really work with later. I may, I may not want to play with later. So they start analyzing and they start reassuring themselves like, I'm going to be okay if I don't buy this toy. Like I have 500 plushies. What do I need another one for? Especially one that I'm not obsessed with. I just want to walk away with something. So that's very helpful. And tip number five, very simple. Talk to your kids about money management. Now you don't have to teach your kids to be money hungry, that they have to consistently be chasing after money. That's not the case. What we're trying to create is better human beings for the future, for this world. I talk to my children about giving back. I talk to my children about, um, you know, giving to others. For Christmas, they take their money and I'll give them a Christmas list and they know that they have to go ahead and they have to purchase a gift for a set of a number of family members. They have to. Why? Because I'm teaching them, my husband is teaching them about giving. It's not always give me, give me, give me. It's also give. So, we do that. We donate. We buy toys for kids in the hospital. We're consistently doing things like that to teach them. So all it takes is talking to them. That's how they understand. That's how they, they're able to value certain things. So just have a conversation with them um, periodically about, you know, what is it that you would like to do with your money? What is a, a great big thing you'd like to do? Uh, I've had Aloha tell me in the past, I'd like to save my money because I'd really, really like to do this experience rather than this toy I want. And that is so incredibly special to me when I see them value it. When I see them put back a toy that I know for a fact as their mom, they're not going to play with for more than two days. It's going to go hiding in the closet. So when I see my children make these, you know, come up with these conclusions, make these decisions, and I see them calculated in their mind, like, really, is it worth it? No, it's really not. And put it back I know I did something right. I know my husband and I did something right. So it's very important for you to talk to your children about money management. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Five simple tips. These five tips have really, really helped me with my kids. They really have. Number one, create some sort of ATM machine so that they can see, physically see money being put in, money taken out so that they can see that process. So they start becoming familiar with cards, debit cards, being able to you know withdraw, deposit, those terminologies so that they become familiar with it. Tip number two, journal and log. For them to be able to physically understand, this is what I have, this is how much I've taken off, this is how much is going into savings. The more that they do, the more that they see and the more that they express through writing, the more that is going to stick with them. Tip number three, if you're going to go on vacation, if you're going to take them to Disney, don't give them cash. Go ahead and give them a card. Have them log what's in the card. But once that card has reached its capacity, that's it. That's all you get. Now, it's easy with money because you can see it physically. You see like I have $5 in my hand, but I don't like my children dealing with money. I don't like them having money in their hands. It's full of germs. It's it's dirty. It's disgusting. They put their fingers in their mouth when they go to Disney and then I have to be carrying the money and then when we're going to go pay, I have to be like taking out $5, $3. Mommy, you only have $8 left. Hey, Alojita, you only have seven. Go, go. Hey, mommy, you only have $2 left. I don't like managing it that way. Get a card. You can get a post-it note paste it on the back of the card and write, okay, this card has $50. After first transaction, okay, now 
$15 and that's how I manage it. So just get a gift card and use that for them to pay for things. Tip number four, don't complete an amount to give your child a gift. Again, do not give your child extra money so that they can meet a goal um, while they are there. So for instance, it's easier explained than it is said under a category. Um, if my daughter wants a, a toy in Disney and she's got $15 and the toy is 30, I'm not going to give her the extra $15. Why? Because does she really want the toy? If she does, then she needs to save up for it. A lot of the times we feel guilty and I'm not saying I will never do that because it's a lie. It's a lie. But if your child is consistently going to toy stores, if the grandparents are always spoiling them, if they're used to always getting something that they want, going to Disney, seeing them say, oh, I like that stuffy. I'm going to get this stuffy. Mom, do I have enough? No, my love, you don't have enough. Unfortunately, you don't. You're missing $15. At this point in time, my children will say, okay, I got to save up. I've had it happen where Coco's like, oh, I want that stuffy. Okay, how much is the stuffy? Oh, it's $30. Okay, let's see how much you have. We'll turn over the cart. Oh, mommy, you only have $15 left. Oh, mom, I really, really want it. Okay, well, if you really, really want it, this stuffy's gonna be here in two weeks when we come back. Maybe from here to then, between your school grades, uh, between you know the things that you do around the house, maybe you can earn the extra $15. Okay, mom. Literally, just like that, they'll put it back. But this took a lot of time to teach them that it's not going to happen if your child is used to I want this and this and this and you know it's given to them it's going to take some time but at this point and when they come back with the extra $15 now they have $30 in their card they'll see and be like I really don't want that anymore and tip number five talk to your kids about money management just talk to them tell them how important it is to save give them other options, look for cheaper versions online, go to the stores and explain to them the price difference, have them decide if they want the Disney version or the Walmart version, both the same thing, but just one is cheaper. But talk to them and let them make those choices and you will see if it was not a very good choice, it will come back and they will tell you, mom, you were right, I shouldn't have done that. But let them make that choice because they're going to see it firsthand how a simple decision like that can make a huge difference. Talk to them. So guys, I know this video was more talk than anything else, but I just wanted to give you my five top tips. I get asked this all the time. How do you manage what your kids spend at the parks? Again, we go very often. That may not be the case with a lot of families. There's a lot of families I know that have gone once. There's a lot of families who go once a year and that's like their spring break and that's all they look forward to. There's different cases. I'm talking about as a mom of children who uh, are very fortunate to be able to to do Disney so often, I have to manage what they what they want and what they spend because if not, they'll never understand the value. But I know a lot of fam families that go to Disney, they're like, I'm going to get them whatever they want because I never know when I'm going to be back. And that's so understandable. That's so understandable because you want them to have a fantastic and magical experience. Um, but this video is not just for Disney. This video is just money management for children, something that should be incorporated in their every day. So yeah, just give them a little bit of an opportunity, teach them a little, and um, they can be very successful, self-sufficient, and above all, they can be great humans for the future. So I hope this helps. Don't forget to click like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I share so many incredible mom hacks, tips, DIYs, Disney on my Instagram. So follow me there, Tea Time with Aloha and Coco. And I will see you guys in our next video. Until then.